do I really have to talk about GraphQL again? Sadly, I, I think I do. I've seen enough of the replies and the questions and honestly, the disappointing feedback from my audience that they think I don't like GraphQL. I, I want to be very clear. I do like GraphQL. It might seem like I hate it because I talk about so many things that aren't GraphQL. That's not because I hate GraphQL. It's actually because I quite like it. And I'm concerned that we use GraphQL for a lot of the wrong things. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, let's start with the easy one. <laughs> There's one particular use case that I've seen GraphQL being used for more and more that every time I see it just pisses me off more and more, to be frank. That use case is something that GraphQL is explicitly designed not to do. <laughs> GraphQL's built as a solution between the client and the server. So when I am on a client, let's say a front-end application, and I want to get information from my server to render and show my user, GraphQL is built is a very good solution to that specific problem. So if we were to put this on a diagram, I actually posted this one on Twitter and it did quite well because it's quite true. GraphQL goes here in between the user and the server, not here between the server and the database. GraphQL is not competing with SQL. GraphQL is a way to query your server for data on your client. It is not SQL, which is a way to query your database for data for your server. For the love of Christ, stop using GraphQL for your databases or you're gonna make it sound like I don't like GraphQL. I love GraphQL, stop putting it here. And certainly, 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 don't do this. I'm looking at you, Hasara. No, bad, bad. Anyways. What is GraphQL good for then? If I'm just gonna sit here and complain, why am I even making the video? Well, GraphQL does solve a lot of problems very well, specifically team boundary problems. So what is, oh, I have it in code mode. GraphQL good at. Well, we should probably start with what GraphQL is. GraphQL is a way for a client to talk to a server in a shared language, usually defined via a schema, to query that server for data or mutate that data remotely with a mutation. Generally speaking, GraphQL's core promise is that schema. The backend team and the front end team should sit in a room, talk about the schema, figure out what their needs are, and define that GraphQL schema to describe what the needs of the client are. Then the backend team goes and fulfills that via resolvers such that the front end team can then call it and consume that data directly. So GraphQL is serving if we make the like database DB backend. I think I can rename this to server. I'll put client here. GraphQL is a fantastic thing to put here between these two sides but it is a wall between them. If we compare this to something like TRPC, so we'll say this is the TRPC solution, rather than putting a wall between them, we're effectively attaching them. We're making these two things much closer and operating as though there isn't a wall separating them. Whereas with GraphQL, you're explicitly drawing a wall that on one side could be whatever, and on the other side could also be whatever. So let's say on this side, we have TypeScript. Then we could have a code generator that takes the GraphQL schema that we have here. I'm gonna actually label this. Then you'd have your GraphQL schema here. And effectively, you could translate this to TypeScript to TypeScript, at which point you should probably just be using TRPC or to Golang or to Rust or to Python or really to anything else. The GraphQL schema is the language between your client's language and your server's language. It serves a very good purpose in that sense as like almost a Rosetta Stone, a translator that we put our things into and we define and agree upon. And once we've defined and agreed upon it, we are now able, trivially even, to generate code on both sides of here. Somebody in chat just brought up a really good point, which is between services. So GraphQL doesn't magically solve this problem. 
I want to be very clear about that. I also feel bad because I just ran an ad and you asked the question, but you're not subscribed, so you're going to miss a little bit of it. Uh, get subscribed when you can. So let's move this to here. So first I want to talk about microservices. So let's say we have three different services on this thing we're running. We have the user service. We have the channel service and we have our payment service. And we want all of these to be hittable via one API. GraphQL doesn't provide that for us because GraphQL has to be run on a server that translates all of these requests in a way that the server can resolve. So for each thing in this GraphQL schema, one server needs to know what to do with it. The thing it does, so let's say you query user on GraphQL. This GraphQL server, we'll actually rename this the GraphQL server or GraphQL resolver server. This server sits and waits for GraphQL requests. And when it sees the request and what it needs, it sends that request to whatever it needs to go to. And these resolvers are effectively a server. This is effectively a gateway. I think the yeah, gateway. So I'll call it the Gra GraphQL resolver gateway is probably the best term for what this is doing. And I'm going to delete these because let's say like user service could be written in Go, channel service could be written in Python, and payment service could be written in Java. Doesn't really matter. Ideally, your resolver should be something that's fast because this is going to be redistributing stuff all over the place and then resolving it. But even then, like as long as it's I/O performant, you're good. So you could use TypeScript for this part. And I have seen this actually, where you use TypeScript for both the resolver and the client, and then all of these services are something else. And they can be whatever else. They could still be TypeScript. They could be Golang. It doesn't matter. The goal is to have something that the resolver can resolve and then send that data to the client. That said, as you see here, GraphQL isn't solving the microservice problem. GraphQL is this heavy layer between the GraphQL resolver and the client. It might provide a nice syntax for defining the GraphQL like or for defining the microservices that you are using with GraphQL, but GraphQL itself does not solve this problem for you. The other question I got was what about between services? So let's say user service needs to talk to channel service. So if I copy paste this once more, what about between services? Well, I want to be clear first and foremost that GraphQL was formally designed to slot in here. And most of the tooling for GraphQL was built to slot in here with things like client-side cache management and those behaviors all included in most GraphQL clients. A lot of the benefit of GraphQL is how elegant it is to consume in a long living front end application due to the nature of like, if I fetch a user in one place and then I fetch it somewhere else three minutes later, it knows that those users are the same user because the ID matches. So if there's new data in that new one, it can attach that to the old user object. Those effectively superpowers are a big part of what makes the GraphQL client experience so good. And you don't have a lot of those on server. Usually you make a fresh request when you need data on server. You're not holding things in memory between services. So like if channel service needs things from user, it doesn't store those things and then wait for user to update it. It just calls the things when it needs it because of that, or honestly, because all of these things are probably just going to call the DB directly anyways. That tends to be how things work. Putting GraphQL between these servers, or even worse, between the servers and their database, sounds like a tragedy. But let's say like payment service, when a user pays, needs to update user service to say, hey, user service, this user paid, and they're now a paid user. That is a terrible thing to make with GraphQL because GraphQL is meant to be an all-in-one inclusive schema that describes everything a client can do. And in order for this to work, you would need each of your services to expose their own GraphQL schema that is only er, available for other things here and not revealed to the GraphQL resolver or certainly not revealed to the client itself. 
there are much better ways to communicate between servers. Usually gRPC is going to be your best bet there or other protobuf solutions. Between server communication should be done via HTTP if you aren't using gRPC or just gRPC if you can. Because inter-server communication is a very different use case that GraphQL was explicitly not designed for. Another way of thinking of GraphQL is GraphQL shouldn't be broken up based on permissions. Like if you have a GraphQL schema, you need to assume everything in there is public to some extent and every user can call everything in there. It might error when they call it. It might say, hey, you don't have permission to do this, but everything in there is callable. Everything in there is real. And as such, you need to be considerate that that GraphQL schema is almost like a public thing by definition. GraphQL is designed in a way where you're not supposed to think about services. When I live in client land here on TypeScript, the beauty of GraphQL, and this is what I love about GraphQL, none of this exists to me anymore. Before GraphQL was introduced at Twitch, I was a begrudgingly full stack dev that honestly didn't like the front end too much and found themselves doing more back end. When GraphQL happened for the first time ever, there was a real line drawn between the back end and the front end that I didn't have to worry about the other side. Prior to GraphQL at Twitch, I had to be full stack to an extent because the back end would never do what I needed it to and I have to go in the back end to fix it to use it on front end, at which point I would just stay in back end. But with GraphQL, this line is so clearly and well defined that once my back end team and I have agreed on what the schema looks like, we go off into our own worlds. We don't have to talk to each other. We don't have to like each other. We don't exist to each other anymore because we have our thing at the other side, our GraphQL schema, the contract between the services, and from there we are done. Let me emphasize that because it's important. From there, we are done. <laughs> I don't have to care as the front end engineer about how you implement your backend stuff once the GraphQL schema has been defined and agreed upon. That is the biggest value in GraphQL by far. If that is not a thing that sounds very exciting to you, if you're like, eh, I'm going to be caring about the backend anyways, I own the backend, I'm a full stack dev. You're not getting a lot of the value that GraphQL was built to provide, and that is fine. You might still get some of the other values enough that it makes sense to use it. But by far, the biggest value GraphQL gives a project, and in particular a company, is the ability to more meaningfully separate the front end teams and the back end teams in a way where they can agree on one thing and be done. That is the core value of GraphQL that is not matched by any other solution at all. Nothing comes close. So if your backend teams and your frontend teams are in a chaotic state where they're moving all over the place, they might not interact a whole lot, they might not like each other, those types of things, GraphQL solves those bureaucratic problems at your company very well. And those bureaucratic problems are a common reality at larger companies. They're actually kind of the default. So many teams and organizations benefit greatly from GraphQL and the patterns that it enables. But you have to ask yourself if you are one of those teams and one of those people. If you're the majority, like if the majority of the code in your services are things you understand and touch every day, you probably don't need GraphQL as much. But if you're not on that side, let's say you're a front end developer that's constantly yelling at the back end team to go fix something that's broken or make an API endpoint that you need. GraphQL makes a very, very good standard for y'all to communicate with. GraphQL solves communication problems, not service problems, not boundary problems, not security problems, certainly, and without any question, does not solve database problems. Do not use GraphQL for anything other than client-to-server relations and use it when you have communication problems that those client-to-server relations solve. And for the love of Christ, do not use GraphQL for your database. Everybody involved in the greater GraphQL development community has agreed that GraphQL is for client to server, not for client to DB and not for server to DB. GraphQL is not SQL. GraphQL is not a way to communicate with your databases and things that were generated on top, even the original Prisma implementation with Prisma 1.0 and GraphQL. Almost all of those solutions have been walked back 
it even Prisma has moved entirely away from GraphQL to building a TypeScript client for database interactions because we have all realized GraphQL is not for that. Do not use GraphQL for your databases or I'm going to sound like I hate GraphQL. Please let me stop complaining about this thing. <laughs> GraphQL is not SQL. Please stop pretending it is. And if you have a backend team and a frontend team that don't get along, don't force TRPC down anybody's throat. Or GraphQL is the best solution for that. That all said, if you're a full stack dev working on a TypeScript backend and a TypeScript frontend, you might not need to throw something else in between those two. And you might not need GraphQL as the method of communication between those sides. TRPC is a great solution for that. That all said, GraphQL is a huge part of why I am a frontend developer now. It is a massive part of things like the move over to hooks and the move to query patterns like React Queries, Use Query, which was originally created by the Apollo team for GraphQL. The amount of positive impact GraphQL has had on our developer experience, the way that we build, the way we structure teams, and the way we deliver applications to our users is immense, and it still brings a ton of value to users today. That all said, I think we reach for it a little too often, and I think we reach for it for problems it doesn't solve and it wasn't built to solve. So please be considerate when you add GraphQL to your stacks and your applications. There are very, very good places to put it, but do not put it in the ones that we talked about today. Try to put it between your servers and your users. And share this video with your boss if they disagree, because I would love to have them in the comment section telling me how I'm wrong, because I talk to a lot of GraphQL people, and I think we're all in agreement on these points. Thank you, as always, for taking the time. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Way too few of you have. There's also a new memberships button you might have noticed. If you hit that one, I get paid $10 for your $5 contribution because Google's doubling it for a little bit. So hit that if you can. Even if you cancel next month, I appreciate it. And please leave a comment, share this with some friends, and let me know if this video helped you out at all. Were you using GraphQL wrong? Is this going to help you fix that bad application? Let us know. Join the Discord if you haven't, t3.gg discord. Thank you all a ton. See you guys in the next one.